Hey gang, I promised you this video clear back last fall and I'm sorry it took me so long to get it done uh, but it's been a crazy winter. If you follow this channel you uh, you know I've been having uh, radiation treatments for cancer all winter and uh, that's going really well. It's just thanks for your thoughts and prayers on that. Uh, my numbers are continuing to go down so I'm pretty excited about that. Well here it is the end of April and I'm just now getting to this video to talk to you about these bears with the tags and the collars and what we know about them. It's pretty interesting stuff. I'm happy to pass it along to you and also very grateful to uh, both Andy and Hannah, our uh, biologists with the uh, Minnesota DNR that work with these bears every day. They're, they're very good to work with. They're good people, knowledgeable and so on. I'm grateful to them for helping, especially Andy who answered uh, a lot of my emails and gave me a lot of specific information about these bears. Um, so here it is, the end of April. It's a good day to do this. I guess I could see if you could see the... I don't know if you can see outside there, but we got another six inches of snow last night. Another cruel joke where we've had uh, three, like five to seven inch snowstorms in the last two weeks. <clears throat> so anyway, it's a good day to sit here at the computer and do this video and edit it. So I'm just going to jump right into this and talk about a bunch of these specific bears, the collars that they have, the tags, and what we know about these bears, how old they are, and their movements and things like that. It's pretty fascinating stuff, and I, I should address the issue right off the bat of why do this. Why should hunters use their license money to, it's expensive to collar these bears, to catch them, you know, the manpower and uh, these GPS collars, I mean, it, it costs a lot of money to do this, and it's a legitimate question, is it worthwhile to do it, and are hunting dollars, license dollars pay for this? You know, for me, I would say, yes, it's worth it, because I'm fascinated by bears, and it's more than just the fact that the information that we learn from these bears helps me be a better, better bear hunter. It's more that I just am really fascinated by knowing more about them and the innate behaviors and the cognitive behaviors, learned behaviors, the types of things that uh, are, are just, I, I don't know why I'm so fascinated by bears. I have been since I was really young. So to me, I think it's worth it. Uh, it also, I think, helps us manage bears better, and as stewards of the land, it's really important that we manage predators, but we want to do it properly, and the more information that we have about the population dynamics and the numbers of bears, it helps us manage bears better, and that's our job as humans. And that's the way I, I see us on the earth as stewards of the wildlife, and to me, I would say, yes, it's, it is worth it to me. Okay, there's a there's another side to it though, and that's there's quite a few bears out there, especially you know I guide in an area that's part of one of the study areas, and so these bears move around a lot, and I get a lot of tagged and collared bears on my cameras and uh, at my baits, and so the kind of the negative thing about that is that I'm guiding hunters mostly that aren't from Minnesota; they're from other states, and they come here in the northeastern part of Minnesota because they want that north woods feel. They like riding the four-wheelers in the woods and and having encounters with wildlife and especially the bears. And, it, you know, I'm trying to get as much of a wilderness feel to it as possible so it sort of detracts from that when a bear has got a chunk of plastic in its ear, you know what I mean, or a collar on it. So that's the trade-off and that's the reality of what we deal with. Fortunately, a relatively small percentage of the bears have the collars and tags. If you don't want to shoot one with a tag in its ear at my camp, you'll probably have an opportunity to shoot one that doesn't have a tag in its ear. And of course, we really discourage people. I mean, the DNR can't legally stop you from shooting a bear with a GPS collar on, but it can really short circuit the information that we're getting from that bear. And so at my camp, we really discourage people from shooting the bears with collars and I think most people understand that so so let's dive right into this here and the first bear I'm going to talk about is bear number 6007 and that is a bear that I had on a bait in 2020 
And then again, I had it on a bait in 2021, but that bait was 14 miles from the bait it was on the previous year. I did not have that bait here on a bait in 2022. I don't know what happened to him or where he went. He's obviously a bear that travels long distances, so he could be about anywhere. And I actually did an entire video on Bear 6007 and his travels and so forth, which is, I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can watch that one if you want to uh, learn more about this fascinating bear. He's a huge, big old bear. It's pretty interesting stuff. So I'm just going to go through the information that Andy gave me through email here. And I printed these off just so I can um, go through them for you. And I wanted to... Uh, uh, just go through these individuals and give you what information that we know about each of these bears. One of the bears that we know a lot about and uh, we know a lot more about it now because one of my hunters actually shot this bear and I'm going to give you more information about that later. It's bear number 6055 which is a four-year-old female and it is the daughter of 6042 which I'll talk about also, and she has three cubs right now, and this is a four-year-old daughter of that bear, and uh, she probably would have had her first cubs this year if uh, we hadn't shot her. She was 100 pounds in February of 2020, and uh, she was over 200 when we shot her. Some interesting things about that we know about this, and she had not, she had not had cubs before, and when the habitat is really good, Sows can have cubs when they're three years old. Um, it almost never happens before that. And if, if the habitat and the food sources are moderate to lower than average, um, it can be five years before they have their first set of cubs. Anyway, that's about 6055, and I'm going to tell you more about her later in the video um, because one of my hunters actually shot her. So 6042 is the sow that has three cubs and she has a GPS collar on her and she is a 14 to 15 year old female and they're very well familiar with her they've encountered her they went to her den many times uh, here Andy says he gives me the area that she ranges in it's a pretty large area and uh, in fact I had this bear at two different baits that were two miles apart and she's got these little cubs and she would go back and forth between these two baits two miles apart, sometimes in the same day. And so there, she's covering a lot of ground. And, and he gives me some information here about her home range, which is, for obvious reasons, I can't tell you specifics about it. Um, she had three cubs this spring, two males and a female. And her collar battery is starting to fail for the GPS points, but the VHF in the collar will remain working for another couple of years. So we'll be able to find her and work her up this winter, change out her collar. So they're planning to put a new collar on her. Uh, it's probably already done since it's the end of April and, and I got this information last fall. Okay, so another big bear that uh, we were really hoping to get a shot at and, and did not uh, was bear number 6026. And this is a 10 year old male. And uh, he, he said, to my knowledge, he should be the only one with a red and yellow combo in the right ear. He is uh, one of the bears that were in there. Don't shoot the collared bears brochure that the DNR put out, but they've since taken his collar off. He says we pulled his collar on February of 2020, and he was 392 pounds in February in the den when they took the collar off, and, and that bear in the fall is probably pushing 500 pounds. He's missing his left ear tag, and uh, you know he doesn't have a left ear tag, so I didn't know he ever had one, but apparently it's come off. And he also says, his, this is interesting, he is one of the bears that travels from north of Grand Rapids clear to Merrifield every year to the oak trees that are in an area down by Merrifield, Minnesota. These, some of these bears travel huge distances, and this bear is one of them. And sure enough, about the 1st of September, he just disappeared off the bait, and he probably traveled that 50, 60 miles or more down to Merrifield. So... Sometimes these bears disappear off your bait and you think, well, I don't know what happened and did he get spooked or did he find another bait? He might actually be, you know, 50, 60, 70 miles away. These bigger males travel incredible distances. Bear 6013 is a ten, another 10-year-old male. Uh, he dens way up in the bog country, either by the Deer River bog between Highway 6 and 253 
or in the Craigville swamps, which is quite a ways north of where I'm hunting, um, and sometimes near the Gemmel Beach Road on the bog near Highway 71 by North Ohm. So that bear is traveling huge distances to den in the winter. One fall, he went up to Bear Lake, walked over to Ponema on Lower Red Lake, and then he denned out in the middle of the bogs by Margie. He came back the following year in May, and they've since taken his collar off. He, the last time they encountered him with the collar, when they took the collar off, he was 330 pounds in February of 2020. So this bear is traveling miles and miles and miles, and he's really, he's really wearing out the foot leather, and he's a big sucker. So a little bit more about the tags. So he says that the one by one and a half inch tags are just for bears that they've handled in the past, and all that tag indicates is it's not really a research bear, so to speak. It's just a, a bear that they've handled and weighed, and maybe they it was a cub while it was in the den with its mother, and they put these tags in its ears so they can recognize it and uh, get information when somebody shoots the bear, then it's got a number on it, which you turn in the tags and you report the number, which is what I did with 6055, which we're going to talk about here in a second. So he says it's totally fine to shoot these bears, but generally speaking, any bear handled after 2020 without a collar has been given gray ear tags. So if you see a, a bear with gray ear tags, you know that it was handled after 2020. We do have some out there with double green small tags as well, and those were orphaned cubs that were rehabbed and released. If any of your clients happen to shoot one of these small, with small tags, give me a call so we'll know that the bear was taken. Okay, there's no issues with killing these bears, but we just want to know where they were taken so we can have a final record of each. The hunter viewer or hunter with, with uh, my guide service, either way, if you're seeing this, the hunter can write the tag numbers on the tooth envelope and enclose the ear tags inside and uh, cut the posts off so it'll fit in the envelope. So really interesting. So let's go back to bear number 6055 which is the one with the double red ear tags that was shot by Jason um, from South Dakota. When I walked in and put Jason in the stand I pulled a card on the camera and I had pictures of this bear um, just shortly before I came in there. So it was in there in the middle of the afternoon and then it came in a couple hours before dark and he got a good shot on it. So here's what bear biologist Andy said about this bear. He said, it's always a surprise how far these bears move. This, this bear was a daughter of a sow that's been on that same bait, but this bear has ranged widely and ends up back in, in that same area. And there's a lot of things I would like to know about dispersal, especially among the males and um, how far they travel. And the young males, when they leave the sow, um, how far do they go to kind of set up a home range of their own? That's some information that I'm really interested in and hopefully we'll learn more about that as time goes on. So this bear that Jason shot was a, was a really good sized bear, very heavy, uh, in, in really good health, tremendous eating bear, right at 200, just over 200 pounds I believe, which is big for a four year old sow. And uh, so it's interesting to know as much as we know about that particular bear. So I hope this has been interesting to you. If it has, if you picked up a nugget or two that you think is interesting, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please do. Uh, it really helps this channel grow and helps me keep doing videos like this. So I will put a link to the video of Bear 6007 right about there. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.